This is going to be the last video in our series of epithelial tissues and so we will be covering our last epithelial tissue. So far we have covered simple squamous epithelium, simple cuboidal epithelium, simple columnar epithelium, stratified squamous epithelium, stratified cuboidal epithelium, and pseudo-stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. This video will be looking at transitional epithelium. So let's get ourselves a good definition of epithelial tissues. Epithelial tissues are going to border the outside world or line internal body spaces. Remember, we call our internal body spaces a lumen. All right, so let's start and take a look at our transitional epithelium. This is a picture of transitional epithelium of a ureter, and a ureter is a portion of our urinary tract. So it is a tube that will distend to allow urine to travel from our kidney down to our urinary bladder. So now let's go ahead and review our name. This name is a little bit different from the names that we have seen previously because this epithelium is a little bit different from what we've seen previously. The word transitional means that this tissue is going to take different forms depending on whether the organ that it lines is stretched or relaxed. So here in our picture we can see that our epithelium is sort of uh, bubbled up and this means that our organ, our ureter, is relaxed. If it were stretched, then we would see our tissue all in one smooth line. And then epithelium means that we are bordering an internal space in this case. Okay, let's get some details of our transitional epithelium. So our cells, and you can see in this picture we've got number of layers of cells here in our transitional epithelium. Our cells are going to be bunched up and crowded over each other and all of our cells are going to be differently shaped. So I think that they look like soap bubbles and how soap bubbles sort of gather up on top of each other and a lot of our cells are going to be rounded but some of them may look cuboidal and some of them may look columnar. Some of our cells even may have two nuclei and when our transitional epithelium is all stretched out, let's say you've got a very full urinary bladder, then the numbers of layers are going to decrease down to just a couple of cells and then our cells are going to appear flattened. I've already named a couple of different locations for our transitional epithelium. One of those was a ureter or ureter, it can be pronounced both ways. A ureter is going to convey urine from our kidney down to our urinary bladder and our urinary bladder is also lined with transitional epithelium as well as a portion of the urethra. So we're really dealing with the urinary tract here. And I've also alluded to the function of our transitional epithelium. Our transitional epithelium is going to allow for distension or stretching of an organ without damaging any of the tissue. So we can't say that our transitional epithelium does stretch and recoil because we don't have elastic fibers in our transitional epithelium. So our transitional epithelium allows for the stretching, but there's going to be other tissues that are responsible for the recoil after you have already voided your bladder. So transitional epithelium does the stretching to allow 
for urine to pass through our ureters or to have a very full urinary bladder, but not for the recoil of that tissue. If we take a closer look at our transitional epithelium, you can see all the different shapes to our various cells. And you can see that they kind of look like bubbles all stacked up on one another. So from here, there's our basal lamina. And then this guy, that's our transitional epithelium. Here we see a couple of other pictures. We've got a close-up, again, where we can see our cells are round and they kind of look like bubbles all stacked on one another. And we can see a farther away picture where our transitional epithelium is here in our cross-section of a ureter. And this clearly displays that our ureter is relaxed as we've got this tissue sort of folded up on itself. And again, just another close-up so that we can see that our cells look like bubbles all stacked up on one another. And this one I like a lot because um, it gives you a nice clear view of the cells and all the different shapes that the cells can take. And that concludes our epithelial tissue series. As always, if you have questions, please do not hesitate to contact your instructor.